what's up guys welcome back to fisher hex my name is travis today we're going to be doing some maintenance on the quarantine rack slash system now if you're not familiar with this build i set it up about a year ago and it's made up of uh, six 20 gallon longs that i picked up from the peco dollar per gallon sale now if you want to see that build definitely check out the link in the description where i go through this whole process step by step so if you want to uh, imitate it and make it at your house you can definitely do it through that video either way the uh, system, like I said, has been up for about a year, and I've noticed over the last month or so while I was quarantined fish that I just wasn't getting the normal amount of air through the sponge filters. It just seemed like it wasn't working like it should. Now, after doing some investigating, I noticed that uh, the airline tube has actually gotten really stiff, and it's not holding a nice seal on the pump side of things where the regulator is, as well as on the sponge filter. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and take out all the PVC that I have the fish going. We're going to clean it. We're going to clean all the sponge filters. We're going to... Uh, redo some of the tubing here by cutting off the end also probably gluing some of the tubing on the regulator just to make sure it doesn't come loose uh, later on and uh, yeah so hopefully you enjoy the video and let's go ahead and get started now as you guys can see it's definitely not holding a seal on the sponge and that is really where the problem is it's not the biggest issue i have because it is underwater and i haven't seen any kind of like bubbles or anything leaking from that end uh, but it is part of the issue uh, the real problem comes over here to these uh, regulators it's actually not uh, the top of them where it goes to the sponge filters it's actually underneath where it's coming from the air pump the four ports from the air pump split off to each uh, two ports here on the regulators and uh, it's definitely loose I actually bumped it the other day and it fell completely off and I was like well that's that's definitely an issue I have to fix soon enough so to uh, kind of take care of this I'm gonna go ahead and first elevate my pump off of the floor uh, for two reasons one I want to make sure that it's not getting stepped on all the time it's not getting bumped around also that there's not gonna be a ton of dust going into the filter there kind of have to clean it off and also to give me a little bit of slack and the airline tubing so I can cut it as you guys will see later in the video and glue it to the inputs of those regulators all right, so the first thing I did is remove the air pump by simply disconnecting the four airline tubes. And uh, I wanted to see if I could clean the filter. I actually took this pump apart. There are four screws underneath it. Now, I do not have it on video because it was actually just a waste of video, really. I took it apart and realized that I could not access that filter. It's just simply a piece of felt or something at the very bottom of the pump that you cannot remove and uh, nothing you can't really do anything to make it cleaner just simply brushing it off or whatever on the outside and uh, after that I just put the pump back together and realized there really wasn't much that I could do uh, then I went ahead and cut all the uh, two by four so there's two two by fours that will be going in the slot there which the pump will sit on leaving a little bit of a gap underneath where it could pull air in now I know that's not necessary just kind of worked out that way and uh, yeah so it's elevated about a foot and a half off the floor give me plenty of slack for all the hose that I'll have to be cutting to kind of get rid of all the hard stiff stuff at the end and uh, yeah so I went ahead and reconnected it and started working on the regulators now with the pump being elevated there's more than enough tube left over that I can cut off all the parts that are stiff and not connecting and uh, still have plenty left over and uh, basically this was really what was holding me back from doing this earlier on I didn't want to take the entire setup apart and redo all the tubing I know it's not a huge deal and it's not a ton of work but it's just it's just time consuming and uh, with me being able to elevate the pump I'm able to use the same tubing and we're good to go for probably another year now after cutting it I went ahead and put a little bit of super glue on the barb end of the uh, regulator there now will this help and keep it from separating I have no idea I guess we'll find out here in the next few months but I went ahead and added a little bit of glue slid the uh, tube over there turned it a little bit and it seemed to be good all right now that we're finished with the back of the quarantine system let's go ahead and move to the front and remove all the PVC that the fish hide in as well as the sponge filters from all the tanks now I am going to leave the bottom left one alone because again I still have that one fish in there that's gonna finish up quarantine and then once he's in his new home tomorrow I will do the same thing on that tank and uh, basically I'm gonna save you from watching me clean everything It's pretty simple I went ahead and filled up this five gallon bucket with really hot water put a little bit of vinegar in there and let it sit for a couple hours took everything out scrubbed it down rinsed it off and let it air dry before adding it back to the quarantine tanks now when it comes to reconnecting the sponge filters just like the back I'm gonna go ahead and cut the end of the tube where it got stiff and it wasn't connecting properly and uh, I'm not gonna use any super glue though just because I do remove the sponge filters every few months to clean them so having super glue is just not gonna make that an easy process and uh, either way just simply connect it use a suction cup and attach it to the back of the tank and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up with some RODI water now some of you might be asking why am I not just adding a uh, salt water back into the tank or doing it that way so the system will be ready to go for the next batch of fish 
Well, uh, every few months, I like to go ahead and run just pure RODI into my quarantine system and let it sit for a couple weeks. Uh, the real reason for that is uh, there's just some things when you quarantine, if you have copper or not, uh, sometimes you just can't kill everything. I feel that uh, there's just some things that require some fresh water to be in there for a while and then go ahead and uh, take out the water or simply add salt to get it back to where it needs to be. Uh, basically, running the fresh water just kind of purifies the whole system and makes it uh, nice and clean. And uh, yeah, you could put some vinegar in here and let it run that way and then drain everything out, let it dry, and then refill back up with salt water. I kind of skip that step and just do simple RODI and then either uh, add salt or do something with a water change on the 300 or the frag system and use that water to refill the quarantine tanks. Now the last thing I'm going to do once all the tanks are filled up with fresh water is go ahead and clean off this salt creep. Now this builds up with sponge filters. It's pretty common. No matter what you do and no matter how hard you try, you're going to have salt creep with sponge filters. Just kind of how it is. And uh, every few months I come in here and just wipe out all the salt creep out of the cracks and then come in with my shop vac, suck it up, and make it nice and clean. And that's about it. Uh, over time you'll notice if you don't pay attention to it, it will start falling off the back of the tank, being on the floor. It's just a pain. It's more of an eyesore than anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, just coming in here and cleaning it up every few months is pretty much all I do. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section. Now, I was hesitant on making this video because uh, it's I feel it's more tedious work. People don't really care about that stuff. But I've been getting a lot of questions on how do I maintain the fish room? How do I maintain my equipment? And I figured this is a great video to share for those of you who want to have multiple quarantine tanks and stuff like that in your fish room. And uh, yeah, so I figured I'd make the video for those of you who asked that question. Now, if you guys want to support the channel, definitely check out fishofhex.com for coral sales, t-shirt sales, equipment, gel filters, you name it. I got a lot of stuff on there. And I'm updating these coral stock at least once a week. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for a, an additional video in the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty excited to do this is the 20,000 subscriber contest. It's going to be multi-tier worldwide. And then there's going to be a special added bonus for those of you who support me on my website. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that video. And it will be partially sponsored for from uh, saltwateraquariums.com. So yeah, either way, guys, I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you later. Peace.